Good morning again, Capital City. Welcome. Uh, for visitors today, again, my name is Kurt Nelson. I think I met everyone who's visiting today, but uh, we'll start with some good news and some bad news. It's a pastor. Um, Andrew, as you know, and Rachel, they're stuck in Florida. Too bad for them. Pastor Andrew said Friday at 8 o'clock it was 80 degrees. I don't think he was too upset that he wasn't coming back yesterday, but they're coming back today. And um, so for Justin and Tori Noel, I think I met you all beforehand. Just so you guys know, I'm not a pastor. <laughs> so just so, you know, please uh, please come back again. You know, so, uh, we'll see what happens next week. But uh, the good news that we have is that we have God's Word. Amen. And Psalm 1830 says, As for God, His way is perfect. The Word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield to all those who take refuge in Him. So right now we're going to open the Word. If you can turn to the book of John, chapter 4, verse 43. In the book of John, chapter 4, verse 43. And it says, After the two days he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told them, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, Come down before my child dies. And Jesus replied, You may go. Your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, The fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that this was the exact time that Jesus said, your son will live. So he and all his household believed. I love every healing story in the Bible. Every single one. Because it's a demonstration of God's love, a demonstration of God's authority, and a demonstration of God's power. Amen. And I think for us believers, it gives us encouragement, it gives us hope, and I think it builds our faith. Mm -hmm. And I think as we read this passage from the book of John, I think there's three things that we can learn from this royal official who came to Jesus. We don't know many details about this royal official, but we do know at that time, a royal official would have been a man of wealth. He would have been a man that had some type of authority. And he would have been a man also that would have prestige in the community. He would have been known by the people around him. We also know in the story that he had servants. So in reality, this man who lived quite a distance from where Jesus was, he could have gathered his top ten most loyal servants. And he could have got four camels and loaded them up with gifts for Jesus. And he could have sent his servants on the way and said, had them said to Jesus, Jesus, our master sent us and his son is sick. We brought all these gifts for you. Please come and heal his son. But this man, he humbled himself. And he took the journey himself, this royal official, and he came to Jesus in humility. 
And the Bible tells us that we should also walk humbly with our God. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 says, He has shown you, O man, what is right. And what does the Lord require of you? That you act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with your God. We've also seen from the stories in the, in the Old Testament so many times the children of Israel, when they were under God's favor and God's blessing, and all of a sudden they started rebelling against God. They started worshiping the Baals and the idols and the images, and God's protective hand was lifted up from them. And a lot of times we saw the surrounding countries would come and invade them. There'd be some type of oppression or famines or something of that nature. Until again, they humbled themselves and they repented. And we see stories, even kings, ripping their clothes and sitting in ashes and sackcloth to humble themselves before the Lord. And again, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. We also see examples in the Bible of people who are humble. I think of Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was a man who was extremely educated, way above his peers. He was a man that had authority given by the leaders of the Sanhedrin to persecute the Christian church, even kill Christians. But then he had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. When the glory and presence of God surrounded him, he fell to his knees and he was blinded. He had to be led by the hand to a house where he ate or drank nothing for three days until the Lord sent Aeneas to come and pray for him and the scales dropped from his eye. And from that day forward, Saul became Paul. He was a humble bondservant of the Lord. And his life mission, Brother Dion talked about this morning, was to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'll paraphrase when he says, I count everything as rubbish. So I may know the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ our Lord. And I can participate and share in his sufferings. What a statement. As always, our greatest, greatest example always comes from Jesus himself. Pastor Andrew loves to quote Philippians chapter 2 all the time. And it says that Jesus appeared as a man and humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, left the throne room of heaven and came to this earth. He left all the all God's angels worshiping him, all the power, all the authority, everything. He humbled himself and became a man and came on a rescue mission for you, for me, and for the entire world. Amen. And we also, we also need to come to Jesus in humility. The second lesson we learn from this royal official is that he came to Jesus in faith. And you know what's really amazing about this story? Is that he was an unbeliever when he came. Because at the end of the scripture it says, once he found out that his son was healed, when he met his servants, and he knew it was the seventh hour, it said, he and all his household believed. So this man who was an unbeliever came in faith to Jesus. And we know from even in the early part of the scripture, that people had saw what Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover feast. And there was news being spread around about Jesus. In Luke 4, verse 14, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the entire countryside. So there were people talking about Jesus. Maybe he heard that Jesus had opened the eyes of the blind. Maybe he heard that Jesus had a deaf man here, or he cleansed lover. We don't know that, doesn't say. But he came to Jesus in faith. And we also, ourselves, must come to Jesus in faith. Mm. Yeah. And again, the Bible gives us good examples. We can all go all the way back to Abraham. Abraham is called the man of faith. And when the Lord 
visited Abraham, he said to him, Your offspring will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. But what did the Bible say? His body was as good as dead because of his age, and his wife Sarah was barren. But yet, he received the Lord's message in faith. Amen. One of my very, very, very favorite healing stories is the story of Lazarus. And when I think of faith, I think of Martha and Mary. I mean, these were women of faith. Here they are in a situation where their brother Lazarus died. And it's painful. I don't know if you, any of you, some of the older people in the congregation, like myself, maybe you've experienced the death of a close one. I lost my dad. 25 years ago was this last December night was his 25th anniversary lost my brother-in-law to kidney cancer two years after him and my sister got married and it hurts it's a difficult time and for you who have lost loved ones you know what Mary and Martha were going through but yet when Jesus finally comes Martha says Lord I know if you'd have been here my brother wouldn't have died but I know now, even whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. What an amazing, amazing woman of faith that she would say that to the Lord in this difficult time. Jesus says, roll away the stone. Lazarus was raised from the dead. God was glorified. Jesus was glorified. And the Bible said many people put their faith in Jesus. So we also, we also need to come to Jesus in faith. The third thing that we can learn from this royal official, and I just want to, want to read the verse again. Uh, I believe it starts in, in John 49 when the royal official basically says to Jesus, Come, come down and heal my son. And Jesus says, You may go, your son will live. Now listen to these words very carefully. The man took Jesus at his word. Yeah. The man took Jesus at his word. And that's the question that I have for all of you this morning. Have you taken Jesus at his word? Have you taken Jesus at his word for every single facet of your life because our father our heavenly father is a loving and holy god he's a god of relationship intimate relationship with his children and he wants to be involved in every facet of your life from the smallest details from the very smallest details to the average things of life and he wants to definitely be involved in what we consider to be the obstacles of life we consider to be the Goliaths of our lives, the mountains of our life. He wants to be involved. And the things that we think may be impossible. What did Jesus say in Matthew 19, verse 26? With men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Yes. So have we taken Jesus at his word? I look at these three things to the royal official, and I say to myself, I have a lot of work to do. I need to do. I need to work on humility. That's right. I need to have greater faith when I come in my petitions, my prayers to Jesus, wow. and I need to take Jesus at His word. Yeah. I think if the body of Christ, if we are a capital city, took Jesus at His word, our lives would be radically, radically different. We would love differently. We would serve differently. We would pray differently. We would forgive people quickly. All the things that Jesus has commanded us to do. When we have obstacles and we have things going on in our lives, we take Jesus at his word. Man, we're living victoriously. Amen. And I have a great example of that. I've experienced that here in this church. And uh, I asked Brother Dion permission to, to share something quickly. Um, Brother Dion has gone through some significant, significant challenges over the last six months in his life. And I've had the blessing of going out and walking the neighborhood with Brother Dion probably, what, four or five times now, brother? And um, one time he pulled in the parking lot. I was waiting for him. And 
he shared something with me, another piece of bad news. And quite honestly, it, it, it hit me kind of heavy. You know, it was, uh, he's already going through a trial, and then he shared another piece of bad news, and it just kind of, man, I'm sorry, brother, man, but you know what? <laughs> we get in the office, we start talking, Brother Dan's got the word coming out of him. He's just joyful in this trial. And what his choice was in this difficult time was not to focus on his trials and his difficulties, but to focus on the Lord and what he called this morning his commission to go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And my gosh, we went knocking on door to door. And the blessing I get from Dion when I'm with him is not only like he turned the whole situation, he uplifted me within from house to house in between doors. The word just flows out of him. So like, I feel like I'm getting a little sermon from house to house. Then we go trying to share the gospel. And I'm thinking, this, this brother's been through this trial, and I was the one that was uplifted by Dion. Dion took Jesus at his word. We all need to take Jesus at his word. We're in a new year. We're in a new season. It's 2020. And I think that for myself personally, I want to take Jesus at his word. I don't want it on a daily basis, and I don't want it on an hourly basis. Because I know myself, I got a lot of flaws. I get up in the morning, have my prayer time, feeling good, start work. I realize when I'm walking my dog before I go see mom at night, I've been disconnected from the Lord the entire day. Like by just busy doing stuff, and then I start trying to listen again and praise whatever. For me personally, I want to take Jesus at his word on a minute-by-minute minute basis. Mm. I want this to be Amen. so ingrained, yeah. so different in yeah. my life. When I'm on the phone at work, I react differently. I talk to people differently. Whatever it may be, I want to take Jesus at his word. I pray that this nation Amen. humbles ourselves. This yes. nation comes back to Jesus in yes. faith. This nation yes. honors the word of God, yes. which yes. is the truth. Yes. The American church, parts of it need to go back Amen. to God's Amen. word and honor the truth of God's word Amen. in the cultural battle that we're having today. Amen. So my prayer is for Capital City Church, for the body of Christ, for this nation, that we would approach our Lord in humility, that we would come to him with great faith, and we would take Jesus at his word so we can live the victorious life that he has planned for us and accomplish everything that he ordained for us before we were even born. Amen. Yeah. So this morning, we're going to participate in Holy Communion. And before we do, I'd just like to take 10 minutes of reflection time and just remember the amazing, amazing sacrifice that God made by sending his son Jesus to come to this earth and to die on the cross and to shed his holy blood to pay the penalty for our sins. The atoning sacrifice, the sinless and perfect holy God who became flesh to die for all of us. And let's have a time of reflection. Let's examine our hearts. Jimmy, our hearts we need to repent of and ask for forgiveness. Take this time to do so. And then in, in 10 minutes, uh, if I can ask um, Calanthea, if I can ask Brother Richard to, uh, to pass out the, uh, the elements, but let's just take 10 minutes of reflection time. 